bubbles. <laughs> of the Retro Kid, where we review, repair, and talk about retro tech. Today we're going to be unwrapping this Nakamichi RX202. This was the cheapest Nakamichi RX202 that was for sale on the internet, and I think it still was the cheapest with all the current listings as of filming this. So, and uh, compared to other ones that were more expensive, I think I got a great deal. So, uh, let's dig into this. So, the, uh, the seller who sent me this or who I bought it from, was from Texas. And he seemed to have packaged it really nicely. I mean, I had to go like halfway across the country, right? So that's a really kind of a far journey. And this, I think it said 32 pounds on the package, maybe 23. So it's already a very heavy thing. So he did a great job packaging it. He did a ton of newspaper, a ton of, ton of bubble wrap all that stuff just to make sure that it's all safe and it all came in one piece. So let's see if we can lift this up. It seems like there's tape around the bottom. So yeah, the Nakamichi RX202. Okay, here we go. So uh, let's get these scissors out of the way. All right, so now that we have all the bubble wrap off, let's just go over some of the facts and uh, cool features of this deck. So some of you guys might have noticed it has this little plastic dome thing with the original paper insert, so that's pretty cool. But the plastic dome was actually for Nakamichi's UDAR technology, where basically to uh, avoid some problems with the azimuth, which is basically the head aligning with the tracks on the tape, they would, instead of, because they still wanted auto reverse, so what they would do, they would take the whole entire tape out and then flip it around on a little carousel and then pop the tape back in. And that gets rid of any flaws that would happen if you were just like flipping the tape head, which some other decks did for auto reverse. And that would like have like less accurate, like the the tracks on the head wouldn't necessarily line up exactly with the tracks on the tape. But so Nakamichi's goal with this UDAR spinny thing was to just uh, make like the best quality sound while still incorporating auto reverse. Now, this deck originally came out in 1982 and was discontinued in 1993. And um, for all of the UDAR decks, there was the 202, the 303, I'm not sure if there was a 404, you guys can let me know in the comments. And there's also the 505. So the 505 was like the top of the line with, of the UDAR deck, so it had all these fancy recording features and um, other things. It actually had three heads. This is only a two head deck. I'm not sure about the 303 if that was two or three heads. But yeah, so this is kind of the, like, it's still a very expensive deck because it's a Nakamichi and the original price in 1982 was, I'm looking at my notes here, $879. So this was, like, even though it wasn't the top of the line Nakamichi deck at the time, it was still a very expensive deck looking at other, like, Sony models and like that. So, um, I guess since I just unboxed this, we could, um, try to plug it in. So. I have the cord here, it looks nice, and then I have the extension cord over here, so here's the extension cord, so we plug that in. Now I'm going to come around the front here so that I can see the front, but we can try to turn it on. So there's already some like wear on the power button, so I know someone, so what's up here? Oh. 
I think that uh, outlet is on the switch. Yeah. So, oops, not that one. Not that one. That one. All right. So now that we have the outlet turned on, we can uh, now we can try to power this on. So I'm gonna tilt it towards you guys a little more. And uh, oops, move my mat there. But now we can turn it on. <laughs> so here it is. We can try to adjust it there. And uh, this is what I was talking about here. The original. Oh, I guess it's made out of wood. Look at that. It's wood. <laughs> And this is just from the factory as a little insert. So you can see the little carousel right here. The tape goes in upside down. And uh, as you can see, it pops out. I'm, sure, I'm pretty sure the shield comes off. I don't want to take it off, but I've seen some RX-202s being sold without the shield. So I think they do come off somehow, like easily. And these shields alone are worth like $200. Like, not that I'm ever gonna part this deck out, but that's why I wanted to get a deck with the shield, because that would just be very expensive to source another shield. But, so now that we have this, I'm looking inside, I believe, so this deck, I bought it as um, not working, like, for parts of repair. So, I'm going to do the repair part, hopefully. And then, if all else fails, I have, like, a Nakamichi specialist near my house that I can take it to. But I think this should work out pretty easily, and I think the so I've heard with this deck that there could be there's a little rubber wheel like behind this plate here that can get kind of hard, and then that would cause it to not play. So the description on this deck on eBay was uh, not very descriptive, like a description should be, but all it said is that the deck didn't work and that it was for parts to repair. So. I'm not exactly sure, but I think I know what the problem is. Like, as you can see, like the counter turns on, all this stuff, everything lights up. So I think that should be the only problem. Anyways, on the front of this deck, we have the power button. All of these are soft touch. So instead of having like the older style piano keys or any actual things that move electronic stuff, like on the Nakamichi 600, for example, this one is just all soft touch. So I've had a deck in the past with soft touch controls where I think it might've had some electronic problems where they just didn't quite work right. So I hope this deck doesn't have the same problems. And it is made by a different brand. Of course, Nakamichi is really high quality. So um, it probably won't have any of those problems, but let me go and get a tape and then we can try to test it out. All right, so I'm back with a tape. This is a Kick, very good album. But I have um, a tape here, so as you can see, it has one and two. They're labeled pretty nicely, so I thought that would demonstrate it nice if it works. So as you can see, all the text is upside down because this deck does load upside down tapes. So we put it in. It's pretty loud. I don't know if it's supposed to be that loud. So as I said before, the description wasn't very descriptive, so I don't know if it plays forward or any of that. So. We could just try to do the reverse. So. <laughs> Look at that. So it's loud, but that'll work because of course I'm not gonna be not gonna be doing that too often, only when you switch the sides. It looks really cool. <laughs> but um let's uh let's try to play it. So yeah. Looks like there's no response. So I can hear the motor trying to work in there, but um, yeah. Let's uh, if let's try to play it without the tape. Maybe. Yeah. What happens if we just uh, put it in here? Yeah, I can hear the motor spinning, trying to spin inside. So it's probably either the idler roller, which is the little rubber wheel, or one of the belts. So. Let's uh, let's take it apart and see. All right, guys. So now that we have all the screws unscrewed, we can lift the top off here. So it's like the hood of a car. It kind of unveils everything. So I think this top slides back. Yeah, there we go. So it has a tiny little lip on the front. 
but then it just slides off. This has a lot of weight to it, by the way. So let's put this aside for now and uh, go to the inside. All right, guys, so now that we have the cover off and you guys are in a top-down view, hi. <laughs> anyway, so we can uh, start to figure out what the problem is. So first, let's turn off the deck. That's always a good idea before you start poking around inside. So unplug that, put the cord over here. So now that we're here, I have the repair manual pulled up on my computer here. So let me just look really quickly so actually maybe I shouldn't unplug that we need to see what it's doing inside when it's uh, when it's trying to clean the tape so plug it back in turn it back on so it looks like this spins which is good that's the cap stand I believe so if we inject it yeah the tapes already in there so there we go. So now if we press play, what happens inside? So it spins. And then it stops spinning. So that's probably for the auto reverse. Yeah. Oh, sorry, not the auto reverse. This is for the auto stop. So I think our problem lies within that little wheel. So I think our next step is to take off the front, this uh, fascia plate. So it looks pretty easy, it's just a few screws, one, two, three, four, and there might be some on the bottom too. So once we have that off, I think we can really get into um, the mechanism. And that's what we need the access to, we need the access to the front of the mechanism. So let's, uh, let's try to take that off. So first I guess we should take out the cassette. So. Okay, here it is. Put it back in. Now we can turn off the deck, unplug it. So especially when you're testing these decks, you want to be careful around this area because this is where the power source is and that's where all that is. So that's where all like the high voltage coming straight from the wall is. So you want to just be really careful around that. So now that we're here, we can start to unscrew front part oops yeah so that's too small oopsies <laughs> so get our screwdriver from our iFixit kit put in the right size bits All right, guys, so what I did to take off this front plate was I um, I took off these top four screws right here. One, two, three, four. I took off this, um, I took off the little shield, the plastic one. And there were three more screws in the bottom that I have to take off. And I just kind of had to pop it off. And then it should just slide out. Yeah, look at that. There, so here's that front plate. There. So yeah, it just has all these plastic shields. Here's the plastic for the VU meter. Here's the plastic for the counter. I think this is a four digit counter. And I've heard that other Nakamichi counters like on the Dragon, for example, they count in time instead of just like revolutions of the tape. So I'm not sure what this one counts in, but we can test that out once we get it all working. So now that we have the front face plate off, we can uh, scoot this back a tiny bit. And uh, yeah, I think what we should do now is just, uh, yeah, I didn't really read the manual, the repair manual beforehand, but I just know that the wheel is behind here, so. All right, so from the pictures I've seen, it looks like these two screws are this little thing right here. So we can get those off. I hope these screws aren't really tight like the other ones. That's a trend I've noticed, that these Nakamichi screws, especially on this 202 here, are very tight. So take these guys out. And I think this should just give us a little more access to 
you know, just a better angle. Yeah. So that exposes this front part. So this is where that shield goes here, the clips that I was talking about. So the shield clips into these little hooks here. So there's two here and then more clips on the bottom. This is pretty nice. I can't tell if it's metal. This top part is definitely plastic and this bottom part is very greased up and I just touched that, so. <laughs> So it, that didn't really give me the access I really wanted, but I think it should be enough to, yeah, we can't just take these out. How do we go about this? I should probably go and read the repair manual. All right guys, so after doing a little bit of research, I figured out that to take out this plate here, you need to unscrew these two screws on the bottom and you need to take out two more screws on the side here. So let me just get you guys and then, hold on, show you what screws I mean. So it would be these two screws right here and that'll free up this right here, the uh, little thing. So I'll put you guys back up here. And uh, I guess we can, Take these off. And I'm using the uh, little bendy bit from the iFixit toolkit. So I'm pretty sure these two screws, oops, I, that's not good. That's not good. I dropped that. So let's unscrew the other one. Sometimes it takes a lot of force. Oh my god, I dropped the other one too. Um, hi. Hmm. I'm gonna go and get those out. Alright, so I got the screws. So that was a lot easier than I thought it would be. So. We can tighten these guys back up. Let me, because I did take off more screws because I thought I would have to take out the circuit board here to get to the screws. But it turns out I just have to turn it on its side and shake it and then use a little magnet that attaches to the end of the iFixit screwdriver. And then, oopsies. And then just take it out with the magnet. So I'm happy that that was very easy. So. Yeah, we can put the circuit board screws back in now. And then I think once we get this other plate off, we should just be able to get access to the idler tire. So now that these guys are back in. Yeah, so here's this plate here. Yeah. So once that's out, then Get it out from this side. Oops. Yeah, so now that we have that out, we can grab it with our little tweezers. So here's the little plate we took out, and uh, it should make us able to take off this. There we go. Should make us able to take off this little part right here. So if we rotate this, just kind of wiggle it away. Never force anything, especially when it comes to vintage electronics, because that will almost always end badly. So. Push it from the inside. Then. There we go. So we have this arm off and we have this off. So now here is the idler tire right here. It feels very rough. So that should definitely get replaced. So 
I have my kit here that I ordered also off of eBay. This was more expensive than other belt kits I ordered, but it's always nice to get the exact right size of something rather than just getting the bulk one that probably wouldn't have the exact fit and you would end up either running fast or slow. So here, I think there should be a washer at the end of that. There we go. So here's the washer. It's very tiny and clear, so I'm gonna stick it to this tape so that we don't lose it. There it is. You can kind of see it better. So that took longer than I thought, but now that we have that, this wheel pops right off. So. Here's the old tire, and I have the new tire over here. So, oops, I stepped on bubble wrap. <laughs> so you can see the thickness difference. So this tire is definitely a lot more worn. So we can start to take this tire off and getting the new tire on. So let's use our and this tire, since it's very old, we're not going to use it anyways. We're, we don't really have to worry about it getting broken or anything, so I'm not being the most careful doing this there. So yeah, this, this tire is just crumbling. But here it is. We have the tire off. That's a very stiff tire. New tire is all like stretchy, rubbery. So this, uh, Make sure that it's not at a weird angle when you put it on. So right now it is. So we want to just make sure it's completely square. That everything is going into that little groove. There. So now that we have the new tire on, we could just put this back on. There's another little washer there. So let me make sure I don't lose it. And then where's that piece of tape? Here it is. And this has that little tiny washer on it, so let's stick that on. There. There, and that's the idler tire replaced. So now I guess we can test to see if this works. So it's already plugged in. Turn it on. Well, actually, no. There's still that uh, there's still that other thing that I took out to get to that. So now that we have the idle tire back in place, we have this plate. Sadly, I scratched it right there. So there's a little. It's very big, actually. It's not very little, but I can live with that. <laughs> so let's uh slide this guy back in. There it is. So it goes back into place nicely. All right, guys, so it's um, it's like maybe an hour later, so, and I um, I figured out the, um, the mechanism here. Can you guys see that? Yeah, so you can't see it very well, but I can probably move the camera if I want to. But yeah, anyways, so I replaced the uh, little roller, so now the tape spins, but like it auto stops after one second. So I think it might have something to do with the belts. So we're gonna put the front back together and then we work on the belts. So let's just take that out, turn that off. And then we have this that can go back in in the front here. So it should fit in nicely. So now this has popped out, we can slide this. Just put that, I guess, right there. Oops. There. So that just fits on nicely. 
and uh, I rotated the whole entire deck so that I could see it better from over here. So that's why it's at a different angle. So. And again, if you guys have any questions about the process, I'd be happy to answer them in the description and the comments. So just comment what uh, if you're having a problem or issue or anything, if you're trying to follow along. So I'll show you guys what the problem is here. There you guys can come down this way. Hold on. Yeah, so here's the deck. You can see my computer in the background, but Here's the deck, and the problem is, if I turn it on, put in a tape, and I go to put it in, it locks in, all that works, and when I press play, see it, it like, kind of, like, does that, and then it doesn't, like, you can hear the motor going for a little bit, and it auto stops. Like, the flipping still works. It's really loud, so I have some grease. We'll figure out what's making that noise, and then we can fix that. But for now, I think we should worry about the play, because that's the most important. All right, guys, so I spent the last few hours figuring out this um, UDAR mechanism, the flippy thing. And um, it confused me a tiny bit, but there's actually... If you pull this out into where it would be flipping or ejected, and you manually by hand turn this um, right here, the little spinny carousel for the cassette, then there should be two gears exposed in these holes. And then what you do is you unscrew these four screws, which I already had done because I replaced the belts in there. There's one belt right there, it came in my kit. But um, you need to have the two, these are the little gears in here have arrows on them. So you need to point those two arrows towards each other this way. And then that will um, that will align it correctly because I was having a problem where it was popping out and then only going halfway and then you know it was all like it was all messed up and that was all because the potentiometer was misaligned. So all you have to do is make sure that when you put this back in, both the arrows in the gear when you have it in that certain position are facing each other. That's the mistake I made and that's the mistake I fixed. All right. So the problem now, now that we have all that UDAR stuff figured out with the new belts. If I put the tape in, oops, there. If I put the tape in and I um, press play, as you can see, the heads, here, let me get a good angle, the heads don't actually go down onto the tape. So you see the tape moves a tiny bit, but the heads don't actually go down. So I'm gonna go and look up what that might be, do some research, and then I'll be right back with you guys. All right, so that was pretty weird. I really like pretty much didn't have to do anything. So what I, all I did was I I put the tape in and I did that. And so before, like I was showing before, the heads didn't come down. So all I had to do was press play and force the heads down. And now every time I press play, the heads go down and it plays the tape. And as you can see from the VU meters, it works. So that was a really easy fix. And if I press reverse, heads pop up, go back in. There, and it pops back up. So you can see, when I press reverse, the tape meter resets, so that's pretty cool. And it seems like uh, everything on this deck works, so I'm gonna put everything that I took off back together, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll have a working Nakamichi. So uh, here it is, the RX202, and uh, thank you for watching. If you like this video, if it was helpful at all, and if you have any more questions about the process of fixing it, then leave it in the comments. If you like the video, then uh, consider subscribing and, of course, like the video. It really helps out the algorithm. And uh, for the Retro Kid, I'm the Retro Kid. Thanks for watching.